Hey, Laura, I'll be downstairs. Get out of here. <laughs> Come back in. Alright, I'll be back in. Why did you decide to start powerlifting? What's the main difference between weightlifting and powerlifting? I've always liked lifting heavy. Essentially, weightlifting and powerlifting are one and the same. I mean, powerlifting is just a form of weightlifting. So weightlifting is, is a broad spectrum. I think weightlifting is like the umbrella and then underneath it, you've got powerlifting, you've got bodybuilding. Powerlifting is just, it's just a form of weight training, a form of weightlifting. It just ha it has a more specific goal rather than just lifting weights to lift weights. So the reason why I decided to start powerlifting, why did I decide to start powerlifting? Because you always have to train for something or something along those lines, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> always like to lift heavy. I like and to compete. I like, I'm very competitive, I like to compete. Um, so I did the whole bodybuilding thing, which was cool, and hitting aestheticals was cool. Now that I'm kind of over that aspect of training, I wanted to actually put some use to the muscles. So instead of standing on the stage and just being like this, you know, I can lift and actually put it to use and put my muscles to the test. Just another goal to train for and I don't know how it's going to go. I could compete and hate it. Um, I could compete and love it. So we'll, we will just see. Any advice on bloating and intuitive eating? How do you define balance? is everything off the table to eat. Loading and intuitive eating. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you might remember when I was going through the process of getting my period back, I wasn't necessarily intuitive eating because I was just eating a ton. I was eating a lot, I was trying to get in a lot of calories, I was trying to get my hormones back to normal after years of dieting. I dealt with a lot of bloating and digestive issues. And I ended up finding out that this was because of too much fruit in my diet. I don't know, it's maybe something about the extra sugar or just the excess of fiber, but I had a lot of bloating and digestive issues. As far as bloating with intuitive eating goes, I would just highly recommend that you look at the types of foods that you're eating. So if you're taking in a ton of high fiber, micronutrient dense foods, and I'm talking a ton, every single meal is high fiber, Every single meal is packed with a ton of volume and veggies. This could be a cause of bloating. And of course I'm not a doctor, so I would recommend going and getting everything tested because you could be allergic to something, you could have a more serious digestive issue that's causing the bloating. So there are a lot of factors that could go into why you're feeling bloated, but my first recommendation would be to check your fiber content, see what types of foods you're taking in, and a lot of it could be from an excess of volume and fiber. Pretty much what happened to me. How do you define balance? Balance with food and with your mentality with food is going to be different for each person. Defining it for myself, balance is whenever I'm happy with the foods that I'm eating, I'm not restricting myself in any way, and that could be in the form of caloric restriction, that could be in the form of making foods off limits because they're gonna make me fat or they're bad foods. And it's being able to look at certain foods and enjoy certain foods like Oreos, or cereal, these are some of my previous trigger foods. Being able to look at them or eat them without eating all of it. So a big moment for me was being able to have just one serving, which is two Oreos, without eating the entire sleeve throughout the next five minutes. Defining balance for me is just having that healthy mentality with food. Being able to see food as food. Not something that makes me a good or bad person. Not something that causes me to feel guilty about what I'm eating. It's not something that I feel I need to punish myself for. Even if I do overeat, even if I do binge, being able to practice that grace that I talk about with ourselves and being able to move on with my life after having a slip up or having a failure. Is everything off the table to eat? I'm guessing what they mean is, are you able to eat anything with intuitive eating? Any types of food? The answer to that is yes. With intuitive eating and with a balance, my definition of balance, lifestyle, no foods are inherently good or bad. This is a completely separate thing than, than my vegan lifestyle, than my personal decision to be vegan. But as far as food goes, there are no foods that are off limits.
There are no foods that you shouldn't be able to eat or enjoy if you want them or if you enjoy them. If I want to have some cookies, there should be no reason why I can't literally just eat a cookie right now if I'm truly wanting it. And that's part of that balance that I talked about. Knowing that you can have a cookie and still be healthy, still make progress, still reach towards your goals, that means everything. So whenever you have that cookie or whatever the foods are that you might be afraid of, knowing that you can eat those and not derail yourself, not shame yourself, and still move on with your life is one of the best things that you can work towards for your mental health. I'm confused with macros. What is the point where you decide where to set your macros? I know 80-10-10 is a big thing in the vegan community. Is that a good goal if you're trying to lose a ton of weight? Long story short, macronutrients are protein, carbs, and fats. If you are tracking your macronutrients, you are counting calories by default. This all comes back and depends on your body, your metabolism, your lifestyle, and your goals. Starting out with a good macronutrient intake my biggest piece of advice for finding your own intake would be to track your food for a week without aiming for any specific diet. Just go about your normal business. This is what I have all my clients, my new clients do. They track their food for about a week and then you see where your averages are at. You see where your average calories are at. You see where your average protein, carbs, and fats are at. You're gonna get a good overview of where your preferences are. If you prefer more carbs, you'll see that your carbs are a bit higher. Or if your fats are a bit higher, then you prefer more fats in your daily intake. One of the best ways to see where you're at with that and where a good starting intake is going to be for you. You can see, okay, this last week, my average intake was about this amount and I maintained my weight more or less. So from there, if you want to lose fat, all you have to do is slowly put yourself in a caloric deficit, nothing dramatic. Slowly add in activity, so slowly increase your workouts or slowly add in cardio. Again, nothing dramatic. And then from there, you just change things as they go. So you might work with a macro split for a while and, and prefer a certain intake of protein, carbs, and fats. And then after several weeks, you start finding that you want more carbs. So you can slowly adjust and add in more carbs and trade out your fats for carbs and play around with it. And it really just comes down to what you can adhere to best. I wouldn't recommend somebody jumping into a split like 80-10-10, 80% carbs, 10% protein, 10% fat. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that to be a starting intake for most of the normal population. That intake is more geared towards people who prefer basically just raw foods. I've seen that pretty common with people who follow more of a raw diet and that's not something that's sustainable to me and for most people, especially if you have strength and muscle building goals, 80, you're gonna benefit more from a higher protein percentage. Just boils down to what you're gonna be able to adhere to best long-term. But track your intake for a week, see where your average intake is at of protein, carbs, and fats. Stick with that for several weeks, find that average, stick with that for several weeks, see how your body responds, and then adjust from there. All right, Matt, question, you ready? What do you <laughs> what do you think of carrageenan? It's like a favorite thing in the world. <laughs> do you know what it is? No. It sounds like something real bunch. Maybe. Basically, it's in food. To be completely honest, I wasn't familiar with what it is. The only thing that I think I know about it is that it's some type of plant substance that acts as a thickening agent for foods. Don't avoid it. Not an animal product, so I don't have anything against it, but I don't have enough knowledge on it to say whether it can possibly have good or bad long-term health consequences. I thought we could learn about it together, so I went ahead and I googled carrageenan. Apparently it comes from the Irish word carrageen, which means little rock. Only of linear sulfated polysaccharides that are extracted from red edible seaweeds. They used in the food industry for their gelling, thickening, and stabilizing properties due to their strong binding to food proteins. There's controversy. Carrageenan has undergone long-term, this is from Wikipedia, by the way, so. In two miles, take exit 220. 
So of course I highly encourage you guys to do your own research and if you have any knowledge or studies on this item, leave them in the comments below. It's undergone long-term dietary studies under defined regulatory conditions. It's been the subject of many peer-reviewed journal articles and undergone scrutiny by independent food safety agencies, international review panels. While some indicate that carrageenan safely passes through rat GI tracts without adverse effects when it is a dietary ingredient, other animal dietary studies have disputed its safety. The World Health Organization released a technical report in 2015 that the use of carrageenan in infant formula found that the additive was not of concern in infant formula for food special medical purposes in concentrations up to 1,000 milligrams per liter. So what I'm getting from it for any food product that I choose to consume, moderation. I don't see any issues with it as of now. I'm gonna have to do some more research on it. As long as you're not consuming a butt ton of it per day. Is that metric? Butt ton, yes, that is in metric terms. Okay. <laughs> you should be just fine. It's not something that I actively avoid, nor is it something that I consume a ton of day to day. So like I said, if you have any other information or studies, I would love to read them. Hopefully we can help each other learn more about it in the comments below. So I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this Q&A. If you did find it informative, if you did enjoy it, please pop that like button. I cannot tell you guys how much it helps the channel to grow. It helps other people to discover the channel whenever you engage, whenever you like the video, whenever you leave comments below. If you wanna share it with a friend, if you enjoy the channel, let your friends know, send them my way. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your questions for next week's Q&A in the comments below and anything goes. So lifestyle, fitness, health, anything and everything in between. Really appreciate you guys watching the videos. Love you guys. I hope you'll have a good weekend and I will see you guys in Monday's video.